And you welcome back. This is still the AM show with me, Gifty and Dopia and Mamavi Uswa Bwaji. Of course, I'm a guest artist mm -mm. here on the show. I refuse it. Gifty. And I'll be taking very special wages on the back of that, I ah, promise you. Okay. I mean, the, the, the okay. yesterday we, we had a bet of 50 cities Mamavi Uswa Bwaji <laughs> never paid. And I intend to litigate if possible. <laughs> <laughs> to go after that money. Money is hard to come You should by. take a lawyer. That will Be help. Don't worry. I need that money for 31st night uh, service because I want to give a hefty um, offering. I I'll, want to top up. I'll gladly. I can even top up if you want, once I know what the purpose. Okay. Shall we? We'll, we'll do yeah. the collection. So we're, we're going to do the newspaper <laughs> review. Of course, we don't have any newspapers here, but we'll be getting online to take a look. We'll start from home, like Mamavi says. MyJoyOnline.com, our top story. Uh, NDC officially announces decision to contest 2020 election results. And it comes with a picture of Johnson Asiedunketia, General Mosquito, right there uh, for you. I mean, this is something that people have been looking forward to. People mm -hmm. actually advise them to do. I think, I think all along people knew that they would go to court if they decided to anyway. Um, so you wonder why they had to do the protest, but it's okay. I mean, protests are legitimate ways of a, a, a registering your But even if you look at gift, if you look at the statement that they issued mm. yesterday saying that uh, the, there's now the blessing of the National Executive uh, Committee, mm. uh, NEC, they also indicate that they're going to use other legitimate means okay. uh, of expressing they had this pleasure right, about this. Right. So they're not just going to court, yeah. but they so, would still continue to use other lawful other, means. Other lawful means. And yeah. I believe the protests haven't stopped because yesterday when I spoke to George Lowe on the post, he indicated that he was just coming from a demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> and I think he was in the Vota region. Okay. Let's say he's, he indicated that. So yeah, I think the protests are going to continue, but it, it's pretty much reduced, especially mm -hmm. in Accra, I think because of the ban. So that was the, the top story. Um, it's been actually a running story throughout the week. Other stories there. News about Opon Nkrumah leaving information ministry misconstrued. Okay, misconstrued or untrue? Which is which? Well, uh, Pius Hajide, who is the deputy to the minister, is saying that it is misconstrued. I I'd like to look at, take a look at that story. Mavi, have you heard anything about that? I, so that's why I'm kind of like curious, like looking at this, because I haven't. But I'm just thinking again, if he, if, if he was to be taken away from the information ministry, where, else? where could he be placed? Now, he's a very effective guy, so he can go to multiple places. <laughs> but it, okay, when you say he's a very effective guy, so by which measurement? Okay, so he's also very knowledgeable in financial issues, for okay. instance. Uh, but I feel, is he like a selfish? I feel like he's very effective, and uh, so you feel like he fits the ministry, the information ministry. I think also so because of the be relationship there. that he has with the media, considering his background. You know but how we cross are. Over. You don't want him to cross over. Oh, he can switch over. See, that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He can switch over sometimes. Okay, let's take a little bit, of, uh, 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 the, uh, a bit of a look at the story. It says Deputy Information Minister Pius Enamahajide has stated that news about Kojo Ponkrumah stepping down as Information Minister has been misconstrued. I mean, what is the misconstrued that I want to understand? This comes after some news portals reported that... Uh, Mr. Opon Krumah is resigning from his post as information minister. According to the report, the member of parliament elect for Ofwasia Yerbi uh, bade his staff farewell. Oh, really? At a mini deba held at the ministry to mark the end of 2020. Um, let, let's take a bit more uh, yeah, of the story. Yeah, let's go up a bit. Uh, Mr. Opon Krumah is also alleged <laughs> to have wished the staff well under the new minister who would succeed him. But speaking on Joy FM's Super Morning Show, Mr. Hajide said his boss's speech was misunderstood. So is it the speech, what he said at the, um, the staff deba that is being misconstrued or the report? Because, uh, let me see. Can we still go up? Yeah. So he says uh, he gave more clarity. He told the staff that the meeting was the last in 2020 and also the last under the first term of a Kufuado led administration. Oh. So here is a quote. Here is a quote. It says, relative to that announcement, I think it's misconstrued reportage. <laughs> when the minister. <laughs> When the minister met with the staff at the normal end of year get together, he informed that this was our last staff deba. Okay, but, but so what is the mistake? But if there was anyway. a line uh, that said 
I wish you well under the next minister. Was there something like that said? Uh, uh, if, if Pius doesn't, doesn't say. Pius yeah, doesn't say. Pius doesn't say. Yes, yes. Oh, but so, so it means that Kojo could be leaving the information? We, we don't We don't know. We don't know. Yeah. They, they, because even the report says it's been reported by some other media houses. Ah. So, But I mean, whichever way, we'll see. How many days are... Who know? Oh, yeah. All right. Sure. So let's go back to the other stories so on my joy. I should get used com. to the idea that he could be leaving the information ministry. Well, yeah. um, it, it, you, you seem to desperately want him to stay at the No, ministry. I'm not desperate that's like the, that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's the, uh, the uh, appointing authorities' sole prerogative. So we'll leave it at that. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so four years, 11. Uh, uh, that's an interesting story. Four years, 11 walkouts, the minority's aggressive record in, in seventh parliament. <laughs> I, I, I love the caption of that story. Um, Except that when you walk out, what yeah. do you achieve, really? You make a statement. Mm. You make a statement. I mean, you indicate, and it will be on the records. It will be, it will be on yeah. the hands that, that I, you did not agree, it, assuming, it, uh, assuming a decision was taken. So just like in the Japa deal, for instance. Yeah, you can always it's go back and say... And sometimes, you know, as minority, the, the, you always have members who are, um, um, the, it's like a shadow government, okay? So you can come back to government and then you can take a particular decision or not, mm. that may be contrary. And you can state your position that you, we did this. We disagreed we didn't, in the we, first yeah, place. we agreed. With okay, but I, listen, that would not be a wise option in the eighth parliament because they are so <laughs> close. Because if you did that... Uh, then you the, the executive will be happy. Then uh, you think because, so? Yeah, because now you're so close, so you really can make a difference. Okay. You can be more, uh, I guess, effective than just walking out. Okay. We wouldn't need the other side to walk out. That's just what I'm saying in the eighth parliament. Okay, well, yeah. we'll see. Otherwise, Charlie, it will be too easy. For the, yeah. for, for the government. Well, Maybe for both uh, sides. So state challenges high court decision decision to stop Amewu swearing in. That's a story we've done um, earlier on the news. And culture of silence is gradually creeping back into our democracy. Senor Jose speaks, uh, 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 speaks against attacks on journalists. And that's a, that's a fact. I mean, the more people feel threatened, the more cowed they get and the more you know they they call up in their sh in their shells and even things as harmless as whatever they, they find it very difficult to talk about it because if you what what if someone comes at me i mean what's going to happen if i said this and that's the culture of silence the other side gift is really not even somebody threatening you yeah. i have been personally disappointed and there are people that i have refused to speak to when they call me i don't pick up Okay. or I don't reply their messages because they send me very demeaning messages. Mm -hmm. messages. And these are and, people you know. And these are people that I personally know and they personally know me. And, you know, because I work with the multimedia group and because somehow they feel unhappy about our work, which is really, I also feel disappointed that they're disappointed <laughs> because I ask, I ask myself and I don't want to get into that debate with them. That's why... I respectfully refuse to pick their calls. I want to ask them, what did we do wrong? Oh, but I mean, you get the thing. That's, that, I mean, that's, so that's to be expected. So Yesterday we said here that in 2012, you called the election for NDC. MPP uh, folks were unhappy. They beat up one of our colleagues. I mean, fans, uh, whatever, supporters of the party beat up one of, one of our colleagues. So uh, for me, it's to be expected. It's just like you say, disappointing that in the 21st century, they're looking at where we have come from and where we are today with all the blah, blah, blah about beacon of democracy, that we are still having this conversation. Absolutely. And, and, yeah, and if an NDC person is having this conversation, it's always easy for them to say, especially under the presidency of someone who's tagged as a human rights mm. um, 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 ad advocate. So it's shameful. It's really shameful that we're having this conversation in this yeah. time. But we, sh we need to talk about it. We need to continue to talk about it so okay. we can. Yeah. All right. We have to move on to graphic online if they're not giving us the hardcore papers. And that's where I handle We can feast. Uh, so a Kufuadu meets cabinet on possible school reopening. That's coming from... A tweet shared by Information Minister Kojo Pong Kruma uh, that they, uh, there's going to be a cabinet meeting today, Wednesday, 30th of December. And as part of the discussion, we're just going to pull out that tweet and share with you that the president is going to 
uh, consider the possible reopening of schools. So here it is. President Akufuado prepares to meet cabinet tomorrow, which is today, for a final decision on the possible reopening of schools. And January, key on his agenda will be to examine the proposals for assuring the safety of our children should schools reopen. Uh, he also did say something to the effect that uh, he's actually been meeting you know, stakeholders. Okay. So this is just the final one after listening to uh, all the sides. Remember, the schools were closed. That announcement came in March this year. But in October, uh, some schools were reopened. Okay. Well, not for everybody. Uh, some of the students had to go back yeah. and finish the calendar, yeah. the academic calendar. Uh, but our children must go back to school. Did you hear the kids who They're spoke bored. to... They're bored. Did you hear the kids who spoke to M, M, Agbaba? Maxwell? Yes. Yeah, uh, are they... <laughs> Uh, uh, the 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 it yeah, down. they want they want coronavirus to go so yeah. that they can go back to school. I, I mean, I thought it was a done deal, but we'll hear after. I'm sure we'll hear from them after the uh, cabinet uh, meeting. Mm. So, Mavi, back to you on the day. So, hopefully, coffee. we'll get a date uh, for reopening and how? later today. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, Business Development Minister donates generator to Tamale uh, NMTC. But the... I mean, hang on. Mm -hmm. Business Development Minister is mm. donating a generator to Tamale. Uh, it's it's cool, but isn't it possible for the a, um, the assembly, the municipal? It's a it's a metropolis actually, so isn't it possible for the metropolitan assembly to provide some of these things? Isn't that what the budgets allocated to the metropolis uh, meant for? Well, I'm thinking that even if they do have the budgets, once the uh, business development minister has done ah. this, they can use that budget to do something else. Okay. So, I mean, who knows? Generator. Yes. It's, it's a, a beautiful generator. generator. It's a big right. set. Well, well done to the business development minister. I was that's just also... thinking. Yeah. Oh, are you thinking again? No, no that's okay. Sun Witness Assault, uh, one district, one factory, Chinese investor at Teacher Mante. There's a video. Maybe we can open that. We'll take our time and do that. But I'll tell you about okay. the story uh, of a driver uh, who's been in court for knocking and killing a five-year-old boy. This was on Christmas Day uh, here That's in Accra. Sad. And the child That's died sad. later on after he was taken to the Kolibu Teaching Hospital. But he was charged for not being careful, being careless and distracted. Mm -hmm. He was distracted on the road, yeah. apparently. Mind you, Parliament yeah. recently passed the law that uh, provides more sanctions for people who are involved, or who are involved uh, in accident or who, yeah, who are involved in uh, road crashes. Uh, so um, I don't know if that applies in this particular case because that was more about punishing people for, especially if you had a pregnant woman on board the vehicle, mm -hmm. you'd be punished for not just the woman but for the unborn child. Oh. So I don't know if this uh, will be applied. This will be yes, applicable. Yes, but certainly they are more, uh, they, they've expanded the, uh, the uh, punishment, you know, mm. the sanction range with the new law. Mm. It's an All ongoing right. case, so we'll see how it ends. Yeah. The driver is on bail, by the way, according yeah. to the story. I mean, I feel sad for him. I'm sure it was, uh, I don't know. Anyway. So we go to City Newsroom. Gifty? Uh, all right. City Newsroom. Reject NDC's election suit. Equidonko petition. Uh, petition Supreme Court, that's the, the leading story. NDC has to Supreme Court to challenge 2020 election results and observe COVID-19 protocols during watch night services, Christian council to churches. Mm. And uh, that's uh, part of the conversations that we'll be having Absolutely. here today. Yeah. And then the state challenges high court decision to stop Ameus swearing in. And a lot of people are asking questions uh, about why it has to take the state to defend uh, Mr. Ameu. But I pointed out yesterday also to George Lowe that uh, the state, which is Attorney General, was also a respondent uh, on a particular suit. And he said he, she, uh, the Attorney General is a nominal respondent. You are the law people. The <laughs> Attorney General is a nominal respond, respondent and not a principal respondent. So I, I asked him to explain. But I think people have concerns about yeah, Why? we're going to pick up from where you left off on the uh, yeah. on pulse yesterday, okay. this morning. So we're certainly raising the oh. issue. Oh. And we're also keeping our eye on the Supreme Court because this is the last day. You know, the Constitution provides for 21 days after declaration of the presidential result. If you feel dissatisfied and you want to challenge it. So that last day is today. The NDC has got the blessing of the neck. Mm -hmm. uh, but what time exactly would they be at the Supreme Court? We will tell you when it happens. I, ha I had a teacher who used to say, who used to say, you, if you, like if he asked you to do something and he didn't say, you go see, you go quay. <laughs> <laughs> 
So therefore, is is C in yeah. Ewe, right? Action. Yeah. Ah, uh, no. What? Huh? Pui. Pui. Yes. Oh, like. Yeah, that's C. I think it's. So you don't even understand. I think it's Pinga. But how 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 so would I know that you're trying? You go C, you go Pui, <laughs> <laughs> and you're saying it's Ga. You go Pui. I bet you go Pui. <laughs> like you. I bet you go Pui. <laughs> Okay, then the executive committee of NDC approves legal challenge of December 7 elections, which is what Mamavi was uh, mm. referring to. So this is City Newsroom. Um, when, when, when next do we go to? We go to the BBC. BBC. Mm. Over to you, Mamavi. Oh, not like and tea ports, SA restaurants warn. So alcohol sales have been banned in South Africa mm. to prevent reckless behavior amid a COVID spike. I think we started this again yesterday because yeah. there are new restrictions uh, because their cases are just going up they've set a new record in africa hmm. and one of the re one of the reasons of course they don't want people drinking is because they don't want them occupying the beds in the hospital they want to make way for people who mm. really suffer mm. from COVID 19 to be treated but people who also need a bit of alcohol in their system mm. will suffer or? come to ghana <laughs> we have plenty no they should stay there we're managing our COVID 19 cases here but we, I, I really wish, uh, hope that uh, they'll be able to deal with the issue then. One million is a lot of COVID-19 cases. To, you know, to Nigeria, yeah. Nigeria is also uh, suffering from that new variant. They're also mm. uh, seriously look, looking into it. And they are recording yeah. a lot more cases, I think, in Kaduna, uh, Lagos, and Abuja. That's scary. Yeah. When it gets to Nigeria. Yeah. But we have to go, it's Gifty. To Ghana. All right. Yeah. Up. No problem. Uh, we have to talk about sports. Our colleague, Gary Al Smith brings us all that you've missed from yesterday, particularly in the English Premier League. Is it going to take a break? Because they're also recording more COVID-19 cases. He's coming up right after this.